Oh, hi, didn't see you there. My name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on the YouTube. Today, we're talking about curves. We're talking about curves in DaVinci Resolve. What is a curve? Why is a curve? Today, we give answers to some of those questions and more. By the way, if you're just learning color grading, we just released a new video course, Professional Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. We go through all of the basics and the big concepts of color grading. We look at professional techniques and all of the major need to know tools of the color page in Resolve. You can download footage and follow along while I color grade things. You can try your own color grades. It's pretty awesome. Make sure to check that out. There's a link in the description or you can click right here. Let's get into it. Here we have a shot of a nice lady petting a dog. I'll just close our clips and our timeline and our gallery so we can see what the heck is going on. Look at that. Oh, look at that handsome man. Oh, look at that handsome man just getting his strokes. <clears throat> anyway, down here in the middle of my screen in the center palette, we have the curves, the custom curves. If yours isn't in the center of the screen, well, no problem. Just look for this little uh, icon right here and that should bring everything up. So if you're familiar with something like Photoshop or image editing program of some kind, this will be really familiar because you probably used curves before. It works the same way, but if you've never used curves, it can be a little bit confusing. What is this kind of interface? Well, the bottom axis right here is the input colors of our image. Starting here on the left, those are the darkest colors and all the way to the right are the brightest colors. We also have a histogram showing the different points of data from darkest to light. If you don't know what a histogram is, it basically just shows you how much of each brightness there is. So there's a lot of really bright pixels up here. That's why we have this spike and we see that's all of these bright pixels here. We also have quite a bit of darker pixels here and that's like everything else. And what we do in curves is we remap the input values to be different output values. Now the output is this axis right here up and down and it's kind of graphed on this line and we remap things by using this line, which we can grab and move around and it makes a little curvy shape. You can right click on a control point to get rid of it, but that's pretty much how it works. You pick whatever point on the input axis, left and right, you want to adjust, and then you move it up and down to adjust it. So if we want things that are kind of middle brightness, we grab the middle of this line. And if we wanna make it brighter, we push it up like this. And if we wanna make it darker, we push it down like this. This also works for the top and the bottom of the line. If we take the bottom right here, which is the very darkest pixels in the image, and we want to brighten them, we push it up, and it brightens up the darker parts of the image. If we want to darken the brightest parts of the image, we can take this top control point and bring it down, and that will darken the brightest parts of the image. Now, where this gets confusing a little bit is if you wanna make the darker things darker, because you know you can't push this down below zero, and same thing for the brightest parts, you can't push this above one, and so how are you supposed to make the brighter parts brighter or the darker parts darker? Well, you have to stay in this graph. And so what we really do, if we want the darker parts to be darker, is we'll take this little control point, push it all the way to the bottom, and then push it to the right. And what that's really doing is making more things perfectly black right here. Because remember, we're selecting the input colors. So right now, if I were to bring this all the way up here, basically the bottom half of our image, anything that's darker than like 50%, is going to be pushed all the way to black. And if we look here in our image, yep, that's what's happening. So it might be a little bit confusing at first. Same thing with the brighter parts. If we wanna make everything brighter, we really just take the white point here and we push it to the left. And that's going to make more of our image perfectly white. And as we just travel way over here, it's just gonna be heaven, right? So if that's confusing, what I would recommend doing is opening up an image and grabbing various parts of our curve and moving it around. And you know what, just because we're talking about curves, I'm gonna go over here to the upper right-hand corner and click this little expand button. And now we have the big old curves. So we can uh, kind of look at this side by side, get a really good idea of what we're doing here. I can even make this really big if I wanted to. Resize it, all of that stuff. So we'll do something like this so you know what's going on the whole time. And the thing is with any control and resolve, there are a million things to go over it here. I could go into all these little controls here, but most of the time you're only gonna wanna do a couple things. I'd say the most common thing you wanna do is probably control contrast. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And let's say we wanna brighten these kind of darker tones up without just blowing up everything. We can grab the middle of our curve and kind of push it up and I can move this left and right and up and down to kind of massage my image. And so I'm just looking right here on the image and finding what parts I wanna brighten and pushing those up a little bit. And now we're kind of boosting those shadows. And the great thing about curves is I can grab the bottom part of this curve and I can push this down to give us a little bit more contrast here in the shadows. 
<laughs> I'm actually doing this at my color space transform node, which I don't want to do. I'll do it in this first node here. There we go. Here's before and here's after. Just a little bit of push there in the shadows. So you can really control your images with really fine detail here, especially when it comes to contrast. Let's go to a different image. Let's get this handsome skateboarding man. And sometimes maybe there isn't a big problem with, you know, the shadow detail and all that stuff. Maybe you just want to add a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of style here. Really common thing that you would do with custom curves, make these big again, is to add an S curve. What that does is take sort of the brighter parts of the image and boost them up a little bit and the kind of shadows and pushes them down a little bit. And this just makes the image pop a little bit. So here's before and here's after really makes a big difference. And again, you can control with the curves, how subtle you want this to be, exactly which parts you want to darken to kind of make sure it's looking nice and not too harsh. Yeah, nice. In my opinion, most shots will benefit from some kind of subtle S curve. That's kind of what we're used to seeing. And it gives you a little bit more control than just pushing up something like the contrast slider here in the primaries. It's a really nice way to work. The other thing I want to touch on when it comes to curves is over here we have these buttons Y, R, G, B. And what these are are our color channels. Y is the luminance, and then red, green, and blue. If I check this little unlink button, then I can adjust just one of these channels to get various effects for my image. By default, they're all linked together, but I'll reset these and I'll just use my Y. And if I add a contrast curve here, we'll see it doesn't add saturation to the image because it doesn't accentuate kind of the differences between the different colored pixels. All it's doing is changing the brightness without the saturation. So that's a great way to get sometimes more of a controlled look in your image. I can also grab any of these channels like the red channel, and I could do something like push the midtones down in the red channel and get kind of this greenish teal look. And every channel you can get super detailed. One thing that's pretty common with the custom curves is to add kind of a split tone thing. That's basically you add a little point to the middle here and then you push up the brighter parts a little bit like that. And then you take the green channel and you push that up here and the blue channel and you push it up a little more than the green. And now we have kind of this bluer shadows and warmer highlights. And that's maybe a little stronger than you would normally do, but that's kind of the idea, pushing a little bit of color contrast in there just using the custom curves. Then you can combine it with something like an S curve in the luminance to really get a nice little kind of refined look there. Isn't that cool? So there you go. There's the basics of the custom curves in DaVinci Resolve. Make sure to check out that color training right here. And I hope that you have a really good day with all kinds of beautiful things that happen near you, <laughs> but not to you, just near you. I want beautiful things to happen near you, like a butterfly that sprouts its wings. Do they even sprout wings? I don't